This is the Tandy 1000 EX, and Christmas of 1986, it was a pretty big deal. While most of my friends were opening their Nintendo Entertainment Systems, my parents opted for this, and it changed my life. This thing was on the cover of the Radio Shack catalog, and people absolutely snatched them up. With its 8088 CPU clocking in at 7.16 MHz, 256K of RAM, and a 360K floppy drive, this thing was far from a powerhouse. But what it lacked in horsepower, it made up for with a cheap price and far better sound and graphics than you'd find on other machines of the day. The Tandy 1000 EX also had a little brother, the HX, which came out the following year. This one had a 3.5 inch drive and had DOS in ROM, so you didn't actually need a disc to boot it. And now, thanks to this video's sponsor, PCBWay, I'm going to take this computer places I never could have dreamed of it going in the 80s. So back in the day, if you wanted to upgrade those Tandys, you had to buy a card like this and it would set you back $129.95 in 1986 dollars. And that would give you how much? An extra 128K of RAM and this board. And then you could add another 256 here total um, to max out the 1000 EX and HX. And as you can see, it has this weird interface here. And uh, But by buying this card, you could actually put two more cards on it. So I had one of these, um, first with the 128 megs, and then all the way up to, I think, 768. And then I had an additional card here that allowed me to use 15-pin joysticks and stuff like that. But this was not a cheap thing back in 1986, 1987. And on top of that, if you wanted to add something like a modem or a mouse that required a serial port, you were going to have to buy more expensive cards. And this one has seen better days. But today, we have awesome companies like this video sponsor, PCB Way, where we can order custom circuit boards that will allow us to upgrade this computer. And what's so cool, I was able to order this board in black, which I've never seen it in black. And then I also was able to order this um, backplate. As you can see, these things use like a custom weirdo backplate. And I was able to order that thing as well. So this is not just a memory card. It's so much more than this. It also has um, the RS-232 port, so I can hook up a mouse. And it has a compact flash. So if you were looking at this in 1986-87, you would have spent um 129 for this board probably 150 to 200 dollars for the rest of the ram you would spend another 99 dollars for the serial port and no matter how much you spent you were not getting any form of mass storage on the 1000 ex or hx and yet this does it all and so what i did is i looked online and these things were going for you know it would cost maybe 130 140 for them built up but i figured that in a quantity of 10 um, I could order 10 of these boards and 10 sets of these things and all the chips and everything and it would come out to be, including the cost of the boards, like it would be about $45 a piece to make these boards and populate them, which I think is pretty sweet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to build the first one today and we're going to see how it goes. So because I'm going to be using my fume extractor, I'm not going to sit here and talk the entire time I'm soldering because the noise will be pretty bad. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, start populating components with the passives like the uh, filtering bypass caps and these little resistors here. We've got these little 10k resistors and then I'll start soldering those up. So I've got the uh, resistors and capacitors in there, at least the small uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitors, and I'm getting ready to do some of the ICs. And we're gonna talk about that for just a moment. Um, one of the things I love about retro computers, and I'm just fascinated by, is that there are so many chips that you see across these computers. Like the more you look at them, the more you realize that they're just built with a whole bunch of building blocks. And one of the coolest building blocks are all these chips that begin with 7,400. Now I believe that, you know, I understand they're upside down right now, uh, but all these 7,400 chips are logic chips that essentially you've got NAND gates and NOR gates and all kinds of other 
gates and logics and steps and you know all kinds of cool stuff and what's neat about it is that this 7400 uh 7400 chip that's being used here you know this might be used in a thousand and ten thousand probably even a hundred thousand applications and then it just gets chained together with this uh what is it a 74 uh ls32 and so you know i have just hundreds and hundreds of these logic chips uh, across all these different numbers and like these two together are working to control uh, this RAM chip right here and to interface this RAM chip with the rest of the computer. And so um, before I actually put these chips in, I'm gonna do a few things that are gonna save me some aggravation hopefully later. I am actually gonna socket some of these. Hopefully the sockets are, are good and won't cause problems in of themselves. And the next thing I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna test them. Now I can test it with this uh, EEPROM programmer or I have this bad boy over here. This is the uh, retro chip tester, which I'll do a whole video on also. But um, I highly recommend testing these chips before you go ahead and put them in. Again, I'm gonna do entirely separate videos on testing these chips, but I just wanted to kind of point out that these cards, like although they're complicated, they're built up with a whole bunch of standard building blocks. So let's go ahead and start putting these things in. So I complete the logic I see part of the project and I uh, learned a couple things. I don't love some of these sockets. Uh, it's a little hard to tell, but every once in a while, even before I soldered, these little uh, wipes have been pushed up a little bit. Um, so what I've decided to do on that is every once in a while, if I see one that's up, I'll put one of these little uh, needle things in here and give it a little bit of pressure while I'm soldering to make sure it pushes down and it's all the way through the hole. It's pretty obvious when you're soldering that one pin isn't as long as the other one. So uh, I don't even know that I'm going to socket these ICs in some of the future cards because they're cheap and I have the ability to test them before I do it. Now, I will socket um, the more expensive ICs, but the Logic ICs, probably not. I also took the opportunity while I was in here to uh, make sure that every chip is oriented the right way. So I took another one of these circuit boards. You can't see what chip is supposed to be there when the chip is in, so uh, it's a good opportunity to just double check, make sure all the chip numbers are right, make sure that all these things are going the right direction, like this one goes this way and this one goes this way, and just making sure that they're all in there properly. So I've done that, and uh, now I'm going to do the fancy stuff, like the uh, 16550 controller for the serial port, and the ROM, and the um, I'm getting, this is the RAM chip and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those, and then we'll basically be headers and ready to go. Man, I look really red in this. Um, so I've put the bulk of the components in and uh, I'm gonna put in the PLCC. Uh, gotta make sure I line that notch up and we're gonna push that in. There we go. And now, um, so I did socket all the chips, but going forward, I'm gonna be making at least three more of these. And um, I decided I'm just gonna socket this EEPROM the PLCC and the actual RAM chip. Now, uh, I didn't even buy sockets for the RAM. I just used rows of these pin headers because um, they're high quality round pin headers and stuff. And it's just not worth keeping every size socket on hand for that kind of thing. So uh, we're gonna grab the RAM and make sure we are putting it in the right direction. These longer chips get a little bit tricky, but everything looks like it's lining up pretty well. And we got the notch going the right direction. We're gonna push it in. That was a little harder than I was expecting. Um, there we go. So we've got that going on now. And then um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I guess I'm gonna wait to mount the front for the compact flash card. And speaking of the compact flash, we need to make some modifications here, which I did not rip that properly. So this thing uses an off the shelf compact flash card reader, but you do a few modifications. Like I just took the faceplate off and uh, we're gonna be doing a little bit of trimming and a little bit of adjusting and make it so that this thing goes right upside down on here. So next step, we need to bend this connector right here up uh, so that we can cut this white thing off. So we're gonna bend this vertically and then we need to get in here with some cutters and cut the two pins that are closest to the IDE connector. Okay. 
And now I'm gonna use some of these flat jaw pliers to actually pull this plastic connector off. There we go, and now we're gonna check to make sure those pins still look like they're soldered really well, and they are. And then now we need to do a little notch here in the circuit board, right there. Um, one click does it. And I think that's it. Now we want to make sure, and I'm going to have to do a little bit of tweaking, but we want to make sure that these pins here line up with the power pins that we added to the board. So we're a little off there, but what we're going to do, so we've got these two pins right here that I added on this header. So we're going to turn this upside down and we want to align both sets of connectors at the same time. So now I should be able to fudge those in place a little bit as I go. Let's worry about the long connector first. And then now I should be able to just kind of work these in here. Use this. There we go. I believe we have it. So that is together. And if I'm not mistaken, that is one of four of these boards that I'm building. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna disconnect the little uh, nuts for the serial port. And what we're gonna do is I have those card connectors in both black and white. So let's look at this for a second. That is weird that that's a separate piece. Um, so the Tandy is white-ish, but the board is black. So I actually have these in both. And we're gonna go, I think I'm gonna do this one in all black. I'm gonna black this one out. We're gonna murder it out. And uh, so let's get that in there. And then we're gonna try to put these back in. There we have it. Now, uh, I haven't spent any time giving uh, Rob Krenecki, I think is how you say his last name, I haven't given him enough credit. He designed this board and put it out to the open source community. He has a Tindy store if you'd like to buy them uh, directly. I don't think he sells it. Maybe he does sell them pre-assembled uh, now. But uh, otherwise, you can definitely get them from PCB Way. But we got to plug this thing in and give it a shot. Okay, so we are over here in the land of wires at my computer repair bench and uh, we're getting ready to take this thing on its maiden voyage. If it boots and everything is good, then this thing will move on to an entirely new video where I'm going to restore it. But for now, we got to see, does it work? So let's fire it up. Oh, there we go. 640K. It actually has uh, 768, I think, because it has that 96 K or whatever of upper memory, but 640 K of traditional memory as Bill Gates said, that's all you'll ever need. Just kidding. He never said that. Uh, so we're going to see, does it find the compact flash card, which I stuck in there? Uh, yep. I've got an eight gig compact flash card in there with a couple of partitions on it and it is attempting to boot. And there we go. We have a prompt. We have a Tandy 1000 EX with a C prompt and two gigs of storage available on this partition, eight gigs total. So I wanna thank PCBWay for sponsoring this project and helping me take this Tandy to the next level. If you're interested in seeing a video about the restoration of this and or the 1000HX, let me know in the comments below. And I was thinking about it. You know what, if you're interested in starting a side hustle, PCB way may be the way to go. I was able to get 10 of these boards and the back plates for around 50 bucks plus shipping. And if you ordered in bigger quantities, you could probably even get it cheaper. But I was thinking, you know, you could start a little side hustle by making boards like this or some of the other boards I featured on this channel and selling them on eBay, selling them on vintage computer groups and stuff like that. You can put your skills to work and make some money with PCB way. So uh, there's lots of opportunities out there and I want to thank you guys for watching and have a great day.